Hello all, this is Sandeep. Today I'm going to talk about missing value analysis and imputation in Azure ML Designer. Um, and I will discuss it in general, uh, but uh, I will show later on in the video uh, how I do the missing value analysis um, and the imputation in Azure ML Designer uh, Studio. Missing values is one of the most common from forms of problems that we have uh, when we are working with the data. Um, and imputation or replacing the values, the missing values, is uh, one of the first steps that we have to take. There are various mechanisms by which missing values may occur, um, and I will discuss them uh, in a little bit. Now, missing values can occur in many different forms. So they could be completely missing, So uh, or they could be encoded as maybe NA or null, not available, um, or something. And uh, as, as a BI developer or a machine learning engineer, you have to decide how to encode those. Having some domain knowledge in that regard is extremely helpful. Um, and if you are working with somebody, uh, maybe somebody who else who has uh, the domain knowledge, um, should work with them and identify what those uh, mean. Um, zeros is, uh, is also uh, something that you would find in missing values. And then depending on the type of data, while zero may be a valid value, uh, you would have to um, encode them as missing values. Again, having domain knowledge and expertise uh, will definitely help in that regard. Statistically speaking, missing values, uh, a, a value can go missing in three different ways. And I don't personally like this terminology, uh, but um, we'll just go by that. Uh, but missing value can be uh, can go missing by three different ways missing completely at random missing at random and missing not at random uh, let's do the first one missing completely at random as the name suggests what it means is if you think about a, a, a value uh, as uh, that occurs in a column or a feature having some sort of a probability um, a statistical probability associated with it then missing completely at random just means that there's just uniform probability of it uh, going missing. There is no logic to it. There is nothing that we can, um, systematic pattern that we can identify that would attribute uh, to the missingness. It's just by chance. So you can call this MCAR as really missing completely by chance. And that would be, I think, a better way to put it than that. An example would be, let's say you have um, a thermocouple that you have attached to a machine and you're recording temperature. And uh, maybe when you record the data and look at it later, there are a few values that have gone missing. Um, it could be any number of reasons. It could be that maybe the battery has died or there's some loose connection or it could be anything. But there's nothing in the data or other variables that you can look at and say, um, maybe that's what's uh, causing it. Usually, um, when data goes missing by MCAR, it's fewer in numbers, um, so it's easier to identify, um, and there is you can't find really a correlation between that and the rest of the variables. Missing at random, uh, I don't know, again, I don't really like this terminology, but missing at random, what it really means is the missingness is correlated with some other feature or other column that you have in the data. So if we look at the same example that I gave earlier, um, in this thermocouple, let's say we find a thermocouple um, and then it, the values are missing and maybe the values are missing for a thermocouple by a particular company um, and values typically go missing after, let's say, a, a, a fixed amount of time, maybe a thousand hours, and only when uh, the ambient temperature or the humidity has gone to a certain level. Then we have all of that data, um, so we can do some analysis, uh, statistical analysis, and find out oh, which of those factors are causing, uh, are the cause of the missingness. And we can look at those and uh, do the exploratory data analysis um, and identify those patterns and then hopefully um, if there is a strong correlation among those factors then fix the missingness. If uh, in, in general uh, this MAR missing at random is uh, 
the most common form of missingness um, and this is something you should maybe as a first step should assume that it is by MAR uh, missing at random and there is some correlation and try to find it using um, in your exploratory data analysis. Um, and then if it is neither of the two, uh, then it is missing not at random, meaning it is driven by the missingness is driven by or uh, influenced by some factors that are uh, external to our observed data. Uh, so to take the example that I just gave above, maybe you have attached the thermocouple to um, the part of the machine that vibrates a lot and it only vibrates when uh, there's a higher load or maybe there is some external factor that causes the machine to vibrate um, and this is not something that we have um, recorded. So and this is the most uh, complex form of uh, missing data mechanism um, and it's only by trial and error, only by collecting more data only by doing some sort of a sensitivity analysis or what if scenario kind of analysis um, that you can identify what those factors are and then try to get more data um, and then attribute the missingness to those um, um, missingness. Now the reason why it's important to identify these mechanisms is the imputation strategy that you're going to use will depend on what the mechanism is and uh, what the mechanism is. Um, before we discuss what those mechanisms are, uh, it's always a good idea to look at the data, identify okay, which columns are missing, the type of um, encoding that you may have to do, um, what is the percentage, and you can do that fairly easily in designer or in, and I'll show that how you do that in designer, uh, but uh, in Jupyter Notebook or you know anything else. A really good library to use is missing no or missing number uh, in Python. Uh, R has a similar library as well, uh, but you can use that uh, to visualize the missingness. So for example, I have um, air quality data over here. And if you see uh, black or dark gray means that all the values are present, whereas white indicates gaps in the data. Um, and it shows where the missingness is. So if we look at this solar R uh, column, some of the values are missing. And this is a classic example of missing completely at random. Um, it does not, if we look at uh, the rest of the column, it does not look like any of those factors are affecting uh, the missingness in the solar column. Um, so you know, this is a classic case of missing uh, um, completely at random. Whereas the ozone uh, column, if we see nothing really here in the rest of these uh, columns tells us that it's uh, the missingness is influenced by those. Um, and it is a large number of columns. So if I scroll up here about 5% of, um, or rather 25, 24% of the total values are missing. This is a good example of uh, missing not at random because there is nothing in our data, observed data that we can use uh, to inference uh, that there are any correlating factors. Um, and it is large number of, and this is you know the most extreme example. And in this case, uh, this is what makes it even harder is if we are trying to predict the ozone, the quantity of ozone in parts per billion this is our target variable. So it's, it's really difficult to predict the ozone um, variable here because it's, it's missing. Um, so in that case, what you would do is maybe go back and try to see if, uh, what factors um, cause uh, the missingness. And then there are some other strategies that we will uh, talk about uh, briefly. So uh, talking about uh, these imputation strategies, one of the easiest and the first one is the list-wise deletion, which just means that we look at the data and if the values are missing, we just delete the rows. Um, we don't really look at where they are from and what, and we just delete it. Now that makes sense if the values are com missing completely at random, uh, the first uh, mechanism that we talked about. Um, typically, if so, example here is this solar R column, 
um, uh, if the number of values are completely missing at random, they're tip usually very low. Um, now in this case, however, the, if we look at the percentage, it's about 5% uh, are missing. So even though this is missing completely at random, we would not delete uh, all those rows. Um, and the reason for that is, and in general, why list-wise deletion is not a good strategy is because you we are biasing uh, the model. Uh, because when we delete it, it's, it's possible that maybe uh, we will get rid of certain uh, categories uh, uh, from our model and that will add to the bias of the model. Also think about uh, the type of model that we'll be using. If we are using a high variance model, like a nonlinear model, um, nonlinear models uh, would usually require or they perform better when you have more data. Whereas high bias model, like the linear models, like linear regression or SVM, those type of models benefit more from having more features. So if you are going to use a lot of different, um, if you're going to try uh, nonlinear models, then deleting will is not going to uh, really help. Uh, single value imputation, which it just means that we replace the data with the mean or the medium or just the population estimate of the data. So mean, median, mode, uh, maybe some percentile, quantile, uh, things like that. Uh, so example would be, um, you know, the, the thermocouple example that I just talked about, maybe we look at the data and then just calculate what is the mean um, at 75 degrees uh, at room ambient temperature and just replace the values with that mean. Now, if the data the or the variable that you're looking at, the feature that you're looking at is symmetrically distributed, um, then it makes sense to use mean or the median in well in that both in that case both mean and the median are the same uh, but you can use the mean but if the data is uh, skewed uh, skewed to the right or skewed to the left then median gives us the central tendency of the data um, so you would use median in that case so if the data is you know uh, log normal distribution or exponential distribution or something along those lines then you would use, uh, it would make more sense to use uh, the median of that variable rather than uh, mean. Now again, if you think about it, this is this is a really, a, you know, it, it's gonna add to the bias of the model as well. And it, it will add, it will reduce the overall variability um, of the data too. I'll show that when, I, when we go to uh, Azure ML Designer, what I mean by that. But in general, if you think about it, uh, if we have the data and if there are a bunch of data and if we just replace that missing data with the mean, then um, the, the standard deviation or the vari variance of that column is going to go down. It's going to reduce uh, because we are just replacing it with some constant value. Um, and so that will reduce the overall predictive power of the variable. So you should be extremely careful uh, when you're using single value imputation. Also, it is important that when you are using single value imputation or any imputation strategy in general, you should first split the data um, and then do the imputation. And the reason for that is uh, if you use the entire data set and calculate the mean on it, uh, training and test, and then replace uh, the values with the mean, you are using the data from the test to calculate the mean. So that, that that's a cause of data leakage, um, which is not good. That will just cause overfitting um, and the model will not general, generalize um, for the unseen data. So always uh, calculate uh, the mean or do the imputation on uh, the parameters on the train data or the training set, um, and then do the hyperparameter tuning and uh, your model evaluation um, using the test data and apply that same strategy or same mean or single imputation on the test data and then um, score the data. So, uh, yeah, and then time series analysis, uh, in some ways time series analysis, missing value in time series analysis is uh, easier to do. 
because the data is um, is recorded in a timely fashion. So if it is missing, then you can use just backward fill or uh, forward fill. Meaning forward fill meaning we just carry over from the last value um, and uh, just you know replace that with uh, that value. Or we could do simple moving average or interpolation. It could be linear interpolation, quadratic, cubic, depending on the type of data you have. Again, in that case, um, having some sort of domain knowledge uh, will help uh, to know how your data is behaving and then use the interpolation uh, accordingly. Indicator value imputation is uh, used. It can be used for numerical variables, but it is more common to use it for um, yeah, categorical data. So what we would do is um, when we talk about categorical data, there are really two um, ways to do the imputation. First is we would just uh, we would just replace the missing values with the mode of the data, meaning um, the most uh, repeating value in the data. Or second, we could you what we could do is um, sort of a feature uh, engineering. So we would replace the missing values with some um, with something, let's say missing or you know NA or or something, and then add another column to indicate uh, that where that in that row um, the column is or the row the value was missing. So maybe a true or false um, or you know one to indicate the value was replaced with a missing uh, string. And I'll show that when we go to uh, Azure ML Designer. Um, and this really helps so because the, the if you're using a nonlinear model, the model can learn from that feature, the additional feature that he, uh, the value was missing here. So it might, depending on how much missingness is there and what kind of a, you know, data you have, but it can learn from that um, and then uh, uh, create uh, the decision boundaries accordingly. Um, MIAC or MICE is uh, mul multiple imputation by chained equation. Um, what it really does is it iterates over, it creates the multinomial uh, regression analysis um, on all of the missing data. And it does that multiple times. So for example, what it would do is it will take one column um, and then look at the rest of the variables, exclude uh, some of the rows, and then do a regression analysis on it. And you can specify which type of regression you want to do. So for numerical data, it will do a linear regression. And then for um, if you're doing MICE on categorical data, then it will do logistic regression. Um, but you can, so you do that and you do that multiple times. And as it converges on value, um, it gets better. Um, so we would, and the, the, the algorithm does that for, for us. So stats models um, in Python can uh, do mice, uh, or there is a, another library called fancy imputation, and it will do the same thing for us. It's a very robust technique, um, and it has been shown to work really well, uh, especially in regression problems. Uh, KNN imputation is um, a K nearest, uh, near, nearest neighbor. Uh, so we would use uh, the KNN uh, algorithm to uh, identify the um, the nearest values and then average them out uh, um, for that. So what what the algorithm will do is look at the missing row and find the most closest values to that, um, and then find those and then average them out and then replace. The missing value with uh, those averages. KNN has also been shown to be extremely robust and uh, really helpful method. Um, obviously it's more complex because before you even create any model you first have to do KNN imputation on um, your data and then pass it on to the uh, rest of the uh, your model pipeline. So more time consuming but it also has been shown to work really well. So to show um, how uh, we can do missing value imputation in uh, Azure ML Designer, I just created a dummy data over here, uh, and I only have 10 rows. Um, so 
in the first column missing one just means that I have one missing value so in in over here missing two means I have two missing values missing six so on and so forth uh, and then this also uh, the number of rows being 10 also indicates the percentage so I have 10% uh, missing and then I have 20% uh, missing um, and 60% missing and then I have categorical variables, couple of categorical variables over here, whereas one value is missing. And we'll look at um, in Azure ML Designer how we can uh, do some analysis and do the imputation. And there are some drawbacks in, uh, or some limitations of um, Azure ML Designer that I'll uh, talk about. So let's go over here, and then I am in my workspace, this really ugly looking um, a tree over here, the pipeline over here more for demonstration purposes. So what I did was I just copied all of this uh, table um, and I hop over here, um, just pasted it as enter data manually as a CSV um, format. And if we go here and then visualize the data, again, let's just make sure we have everything. So the NAN value is missing, uh, the NAN is the missing and then it does show over here the missing values number of missing values is one over here um, and the next column number of missing values is two uh, so all good a quick way because if you have a large number of columns if you have uh, 50 60 columns you would have to do that uh, manually and just hop from one column to the next column um, a better way is if you add a summarized data block um, and then summarize your data, then it gives you a nice summary. So now your features or your columns are in a row. And if we look at uh, the missing value count over here, uh, so the missing value count over here, now you can see missing six has uh, six values missing and then, then cat two has one value missing. So a really quick way for us to see um, what values are missing over here. Uh, one thing I should mention is uh, when you are looking at this data, always make sure that you scroll down and then see that it's not just any N, um, but if there are any you know NAs and the dashes and um, some bad string data, um, then you should really clean that data upstream. Uh, before bringing bringing it into uh, Azure ML Designer because there are some limited capabilities uh, when it comes to cleaning the data. You'll have to use Python, but um, as much clean the data that you have in your uh, when you are importing it into the canvas, the better. So what I've done over here for demonstration purposes is um, first I'm going to show uh, the, the the missing value block. So what you would do is I'm gonna go type in missing and then clean clean uh, missing data uh, over here and you would just drag it and drop it onto the canvas and when you do it if we look at the options that you have the first is the column that you want to clean so you would click on edit column over here and then which column you want to clean so I you enter column name or select the com column name so if I go here um, you can select which column you want to add uh, for missingness now over here again if you if you identify the missingness mechanism to be different for different column then you would have to add multiple blocks for these so if we have if you have three columns that are missing by completely at random then you would do that for those three um, and then if you have something else, so uh, depending on uh, the, the column type and the column um, missingness mechanism, uh, you would create different blocks uh, over here. And then you have minimum value ratio and maximum value ratio. What this really means is minimum value ratio is um, the minimum number of values that you, that uh, the uh, Azure ML designer has to find before it can apply, uh, uh, before it can clean the data based on the strategy that you use. So here zero means, well, zero, I, you know, just replace everything and one is 100%. So this really means is um, wherever you find for that column, wherever you find uh, NAN values, just replace it with something. 
and you can replace it with a custom value or replace it mean, median, mode. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to say replace it with mean. And let's go run it, submit it, and then let's see what we get. So this was column number two. So in column number two, if we see um, it replaced it with uh, it replaced it with zero. So that's what we said. Uh, substitute the NNs with the zero value. Next, I take um, the missing value one column, um, and now this time, just to show how these ratios work, I go to missing value as 0.2 um, and then 1, and then run it, and remember this has only one missing value. So, and then if I show this, it did not replace anything um, as we said, because the minimum threshold was uh, 20%. Where, but we only had 10% missing values because we have only one out of 10, so 10%. So it did not work and we have uh, the NAN that stayed there as is. If we go to the third one, then I have six missing values and the maximum missing value ratio is 0.5 and missing value ratio minimum is 0.2. So what that would mean is it has to have uh, minimum 0.2 but maximum 50%. So that should not work either because we have 60% whereas the, the maximum threshold was 50%. So that did not work either. And the last is 0.8 and 0.1. I have eight values missing and I specify the minimum to be 0.8 and if we visualize that one then there you go, number eight replaced everything with uh, zero. So that's how this, uh, th that's how this works. Uh, now, if you have, if you want to apply some conditional logic to it, unfortunately that cannot be done. So let's say for example, the thermocouple example that we talked about, maybe if you want to say if the thermocouple A is, um, or maybe it is the location, let's say, if it is the thermocouple was put on uh, location A, then replace it with this value. But if it is location B um, or machine B, then replace it with another value. That sort of um, uh, uh, imputation, that is not possible here. Uh, you'll have to use Python or clean that data uh, upstream in during your ETL process. For categorical data, um, however, what we would do is, so I took the uh, missing um, uh, missing categorical two uh, column uh, and then left the default as zero and one and then replace it with mode, mode being uh, the most occurring value. And so if we do that, uh, let's visualize the data and then it replaced with, uh, it replaced it with uh, blue. So this was the missing value here. Uh, but it replaced with blue. So we have blue, 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 blue. Um, so we have five, six blues. Um, so it just replaced it with blue. Uh, notice that um, the original value was silver. Um, so that's the bias that we are adding to the model. But it, it was supposed to be silver, but because we don't have that information, uh, it just we will replace everything with uh, we would replace everything with blue. If we go, if we do the use the same option, but now this time we check this box, missing uh, value with an indicator column. Uh, where this is helpful is we do the same thing. So where this is helpful is we do the same thing, we replaced it with blue, but now this is another column that was added. It says, was it replaced? Yes, true, it was replaced. And where this is helpful is um, one for validation purposes said yes uh, this was replaced so you can see if the values were replaced or not and then the feature engineering that we uh, talked about earlier so we can use this as a as a feature um, that can additionally be used now if we are doing if we're using a linear um, if we're using a linear uh, or high bias model then the categorical data would be transformed or encoded as one hot cat one hot one hot encoding or ordinal or label encoder, um, and 
this would be redundant because uh, anyway the missingness would be categorized uh, or it will come out as its own category but if we are using um, a nonlinear model like a, a XG boost or decision tree random forest um, things like that then in that case this will really come as handy um, to use that as a feature um, and the mod or the algorithm will learn from it third is uh, we do the same thing but this time I say replace it with missing um, or it could be missing or it could be any or anything so we we're not doing it by the most repeating value but by some string that we want to attach it so go to clean visualize the data here um, we have it by missing and then we would the exact same thing that we did earlier we do uh, custom substitution and then on top of that we would do custom substitution plus um, some encoding the indicator variable that we are adding uh, if we are using some uh, nonlinear model so th that's about uh, cleaning numerical and non uh, some some easy ways on top of that we can replace the values with a mean so if i go here and then look at it so in this case these were the missing values and it replaced it with uh, some mean you, we can choose mean or median but um, so 224.75 was is the mean for this column um, excluding uh, the NAN, so it just replaced it uh, with the mean. We can do forward fill or backward fill, but for that we would have to use Python. There is no way to do uh, forward fill, backward fill, or interpolation or anything. So it's just as easy as fill in a, and then uh, we um, do in place equal to true. Uh, so basically, we would just do that. Same thing for interpolation. Um, so we would just interpolate the data frame and just do uh, some interpolation and pass uh, the columns that we want to interpolate. So if we go here, so if we look at the um, interpolation, uh, looks like that did not work, um, but yeah, so we can do that. now. Uh, the third way is <clears throat> that I or the something that I talked about uh, earlier but when we are splitting the data uh, you should always split the data first and then clean the values now this is one of the limitations at least that I have seen in uh, Azure ML designer is that we split the data clean the train data um, but uh, there is no way to pass that mean value. Um, so in scikit-learn, for example, we would do fit transform and then transform uh, the test data. I haven't seen anything here that we can pass on to the test data for uh, transformation. There is a way to um, uh, add to pipeline parameter, but then that becomes really tedious because you have to add that as a parameter in your API and then call that as an API. So I'm not entirely sure how to do it. If anybody knows uh, how to pass that value on to the test data or how to parameterize this, then uh, please let me know. I'm very curious. Um, also, if if we want to use any other uh, imputation strategies, the, the mice or the KNN or anything, none of those are available. Uh, and we would have to use uh, scikit-learn and then fancy impute or stats models for that. Now, interestingly, in uh, Azure ML uh, uh, Studio, the classic version, so this is the designer version, and this is the classic version, which is on, uh, and this is on a deprecation path, uh, but uh, the features are, most of them are exactly the same. But uh, if, if you use the classic version, and then we go there, you will see that it actually does have um, mice. It does have mice, and it also has probabilistic PCA, which is completely missing from uh, the designer, which is not there. So hopefully 
the Azure ML team will add that later to uh, to this uh, designer experience. That's something missing um, that really uh, limits the possibilities here. So. Yeah, so just wanted to give a, a quick overview of how you can do missing value imputation. Um, there is a, a lot more to it than this, um, but hopefully this is a good introduction um, that you can use for uh, missing value analysis. Thank you.